Welcome to Adbit Connect. I'm Rita Excel, Executive Director of Adbit, the Australia and New Zealand Driverless Vehicle Initiative. I'm excited to bring to you the Adbi Connect series where we interview leaders in automation from around the world. Adbi is a collaboration of organisations that have this vision to safely accelerate the introduction of driverless vehicle technologies into Australia and New Zealand. We're also the peak body for driverless vehicles and provide expert advice to governments and industry alike. Adbi has four key pillars. These are reach, readiness, regulation and redesign. And the Advi Connect series is part of our REACH pillar. We want to reach out to share with you what's happening in the industry and to connect you with the most up-to-date information and technologies. Today, I'm very pleased to introduce to you Suna Tamez. Suna is Head of New Mobility Solutions, Technology Facilitation and Partnerships at the Advanced Mobility Group, AMG, which is based in California in the United States. Prior to joining AMG, she was Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer at the AAA, the American Automobile Association Mountain West Group, which is geographically the largest automobile club in the world, serving over 10 million members across seven US states. In her role with AAA, Suna oversaw the acquisition, expansion and operation of GoMentum Station, the largest autonomous vehicle proving ground in the US. Also, the development of third-party AV test procedures in partnership with Talk Robotics. And the first fully integrated one-year demonstration pilot of a self-driving shuttle in downtown Las Vegas that provided 32,000 passenger rides and evaluated customer consumer sentiment in partnership with public officials and transportation authorities, as well as AV technology companies. So, welcome to Suno. Hi, Suno. Welcome to Adv Connect. Hi, Rita. How are you? Thank you for having me. So, Suna, we've heard about uh, your background and also a little bit about AMG. Can you tell us about AMG and also your role at AMG? Sure. I'm happy to. So, I lead technology uh, partnerships for Advanced Mobility Group, AMG. Uh, and it's been a recent move. I moved here uh, within this year. Prior to that, I actually worked with AMG for about three years on the client side, where, as you mentioned, I was uh, Chief Innovation Officer at AAA. Uh, and so over that time period, uh, I got to know AMG. You would say that I have a very uh, unique perspective now, both being on the client side, as well as now being on the side serving clients. Uh, we worked together on a number, number of initiatives. One of them was the uh, self-driving, uh, the driverless shuttle in Las Vegas that ran for a year and gave 32,000 passengers. Uh, a ride and a chance to experience self-driving vehicles. Uh, apart from that, uh, with AMG, I work on uh, all the areas of new mobility. So that would be smart cities, start smart transportation, and uh, smart infrastructure. Well, thanks for that, Suna. You definitely have got a breadth of experience. Um, so a number of people from Australia and delegations have vis visited um, GoMentum Station, including myself, but hopefully you can share with us some information about GoMentum, ta uh, GoMentum Station, a little bit about the facility and what's tested there. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'm involved with all of the areas uh, uh, of AMG where there's uh, really the need for strong partnership and collaboration. Uh, I can break that into three areas, which is in fact the three areas uh, of projects for AMG. Uh, the first one I have to mention uh, is actually how I met AMG and, and probably the folks in, in Australia, New Zealand and around the world know AMG and that's the Redefining Mobility Summit. Uh, it's an annual occurrence. Uh, this is its sixth year in operation. And this is really a, a chance to showcase all of the mobility happening around the world. And what is very unique about this conference uh, is the way it brings together uh, innovative cities and what they're doing around legislation and regulation, uh, innovative companies and technologies and what they're doing, uh, the unique needs of each of the, the cities and regions and how they work together collaboratively to address the very specific mobility challenges uh, in, their, in, their, in their region. So, uh, so the first area is uh, part of that, that, that summit. I think the second area would be program management. So AMG has a, has a strong practice that I'm a part of as well, 
to bring together the different uh, the cities, uh, the transit agencies, the technology uh, makers to create a vision and to create uh, proof of concepts uh, in an area. And what's really exciting about it is the different um, parts of the partnership. So you're having, again, the, the coalition of everyone from the uh, traffic engineers to the people building the roads uh, to our the stakeholders, so public, public outreach, and then working with the cities to uh, not just design and test, but also deploy and uh, gather stakeholder awareness, gather outreach from the public community. And then the third area, which I'm particularly excited about, uh, is uh, pilot concepts. So showing a proof of concept, showing kind of a living laboratory. And that's what Gomentum is really designed to do as well, where we can work with startups that have uh, really interesting and kind of forward thinking visions around mobility uh, and showcase the technology. And then perhaps bring in another technology player uh, or city and create that kind of living a laboratory to uh, look at what a smart city can look like. Yes, so that's a very uh, amazing facility. Um, when I visited there, I was really amazed with some of the other technologies that are tested there. So maybe you can give us a bit of a, um, a summary of what are the other allied technologies, um, sensors, line marking, pavements, driver training, and all those other things that are also uh, use Gomentum Station to test um, their technology? Sure. So uh, Gomentum Station is the largest uh, autonomous vehicle proving ground in the U.S. Uh, it's actually a decommissioned naval base. Uh, and so uh, there's miles and miles of uh, both paved and unpaved uh, and kind of grass has grown over some of those, those roads, those railways. Uh, and it was actually the vision of the local regional transit authority, uh, Contra Costa Transit Authority, so CCTA. Uh, and uh, they brought in AMG, it's a little bit before my time, uh, and saw what could be created with uh, a safe environment to test all the different features of uh, a road. So you have paved road and unpaved road, you have intersections, uh, you have new pavement and kind of older vintage pavements. Uh, you have uh, buildings because there used to be a naval base there. They're not in use right now. So it really created an entire uh, ecosystem where you can do testing. It's a safe environment, uh, 3,100 acres, 22 miles of, of road uh, where, where uh, manufacturers of vehicles and new technology could come and test their technology in a safe place. Uh, since then, uh, AAA, so in my former role at AAA, uh, we invested in Gomentum and uh, have taken on the uh, operations of it and work with AMG to build out even more features, uh, including uh, signaling lab, uh, changing the types of pavements, um, adding in new features that our uh, customers tell us they'd like to see. So I understand that a lot of projects that people work on are bound by confidentiality, but where you can, can you tell us what some of the major projects that you're working on are? and um, you know how that how they relate to um, the role that you have at AMG. Uh, I'll touch on a few areas at a general level. Uh, so one would be, um, we, we work with a number of cities, both uh, regionally, nationally, internationally on program management. And this is really where you work with uh, the cities, the transportation companies, uh, the, the, uh, the manufacturers on what is that future vision for mobility? What does it look like uh, in their locale? And so this is not just the vision, but it's also the, the uh, needs of that community. So what is the specific need in that community? Is it congestion? Is it parking management? Is it uh, highway infrastructure and how to reuse that as opposed to building more? So uh, a typical engagement might be to work with the various uh, stakeholders, the agencies, bring them all together in a kind of public partner, public and private collaborative framework and identify all of those uh, potential projects and then, and then uh, prioritize them and understand which ones to move forward with under what time scale. So really, your um, both top down and bottoms up uh, vision for mobility and coming up with the and working together on the vision and the strategy for that. So we've done that a number of times and that's exciting. Uh, one example of that would probably be mobility as a service. And this is a specific need to one community where uh, in the Bay Area. So if anyone, if you've been to the Bay Area, 
uh, we're known, we're notorious for our traffic. It's, it's, uh, it can be a, a heavy commute for many people. And so you can't build bigger highways, you can't build bigger, uh, you know, parking, parking uh, garages. Uh, and our public transit is, is fairly good, but you can't build more of those. So how do we reimagine how we tie together uh, through technology the existing program? So that could be bike shares, that could be car shares, that's autonomous vehicles, that's existing traffic, that's the infrastructure, and tie them all together in a way that makes it more effective and efficient for transport needs and meets, meets the needs and the challenges of that area. Yes, thanks for that, um, Suna. Um, I think, you know, we're all experiencing the um, impact of COVID-19. I'd just be interested to know uh, your thoughts on how it's impacted your current work and particularly our industry. But also, it'd be good to understand from your perspective whether you think um, the experience will impact the speed of technology coming to market. So yeah, all around the world right now, we're we're dealing with with uh, with COVID. We are sheltering in, in place, as as you're aware. I'm I'm working in my home office. Uh, you know, so I think the first very first impact for us was our annual redefining mobility conference, and it was before the shelter in place orders were issued. But you know, proactively moved most of it online, and so. The technology works. You know, there was a QA session. It was quite engaging. I'd say it was a success. So that was kind of the, an early look at how do we uh, disseminate information and have groups come together and collaborate, but in a virtual sense. Uh, you know, we in mobility we think about commuting, getting from point A to B. But in this world, we have to look at how we get also things from A to B, or, or the purpose of mobility, what types of uh, transportation vehicles we use for mobility. So. Uh, I think we will see, and we're seeing already an increase in the robotics and the delivery technologies. Do people need to commute? Do we all need to commute? Uh, there's the concept of remote operation or having deli also delivery of, of goods to people. So I think we'll see even stronger focus on those types of technologies first. Thanks for that, Suna. I do think that this experience coming out of COVID-19, we have seen some uh, applications of moving goods um, and protecting uh, people by using um, driverless technology. Uh, I think that, that we will see some acceleration of some of this technology for those delivery applications in sensitive areas. But now I just want to shift our conversation a little bit to uh, around the competition uh, about test facilities. We've seen test facilities exist all over the world now, including numerous in Australia and New Zealand. Um, there seems to be a bit of a sorority or a fraternity build up around that. Um, I'm just interested to know how you stay connected with these. I, I like that you use the, the terms fraternity and sorority because it does, I'm not sure if you, you, you notice the same thing, but in this world of new mobility, uh, there is a little bit of a fraternity and sorority of there are folks that uh, we, we start to have informal networks where uh, you know, we, we become aware of what's happening in different cities and it turns out there's a connection to those people. So it's a, it, it, it was a small community, but it's growing in the, the same names and companies and innovative and progressive cities, you know, keep, keep coming up again and again, which is wonderful. Uh, that being said, we can definitely do a better job of collaborating, not just informally, uh, but more formally all around the world as we think about building our better information networks and especially in a world where you know, perhaps we're more digital and not and not you know physically visiting spaces. How do we keep that information flow? Uh, how do we keep it? Uh, especially when we look at you know mobility and and uh, more automated and, auto and autonomous driving systems. You know, our shared goal is is uh, traffic safety. Uh, in the U.S., we have about forty thousand traffic fatalities a year. Uh, we have cities, and again, especially today, where you know budget and funding is limited. So how do we build out uh, how do we use and optimize the infrastructure that we have uh, without building more? So the need for these information sharing is important. I'd say as far as the U.S. testing grounds go, there's a good knowledge about which ones uh, have different features. So we have uh, long miles of testing, both the paved and unpaved roads. Uh, other facilities might be known for their, their types of barriers or uh, high-speed test tracks. And so you know, could we make these features more uh, known? And so uh, folks would know kind of where where to go to for 
the specific characteristics and be able to share those. And that becomes a good cooperative framework because it's it's uh, it's different aspects of, of the, the mobility experience. Uh, and I would say thirdly also, um, because we have a shared uh, reason for going into this, a shared objective around traffic, safety, reducing fatalities, optimizing use of infrastructure, that it behooves the, the uh, industry to share the results. And I think we're starting to see quite a few sharing their testing results. Uh, many of the manufacturers in the US uh, shared their testing results uh, with our regulators uh, because it's about demonstrating the safety. Uh, and we're seeing more and more of that, but I think that is an area that we can uh, play into and advance. And one specific way we can do it, which we're also doing at Gomentum, but you know, all the test tracks can do, is doing kind of friendly challenges. Uh, technology companies want to share their innovations in a in a way, uh, in a friendly way. And you may be aware of the DARPA challenge uh, that helped launch autonomous vehicles uh, in the US. So as a pre-commercial technology uh, and have these companies, these actually also student teams, uh, compete to make their way in autonomous vehicles through city settings, through uh, kind of, uh, urban and suburban uh, areas. And so the next step of that would be for some of these testing grounds to throw their own friendly competitions and we could share the results that way and, and make it fun. Yes, we all like friendly competition, uh, but I agree with you. And one of our key advocacy activities with ADV is around um, getting national coordination, but also global coordination around test facilities and test protocols. After all, we're developing this technology for a global marketplace. So I think that's really important um, that we see um, whether it's a friendly competition, but at least um, that collaboration occurring. So um, along those lines around competition, uh, just interested uh, from your perspective, where do you think that the US is leading in this sector? And where do you think that Australia and New Zealand have an advantage? So uh, there's a, uh... KPMG puts out a autonomous vehicle readiness index, and I believe this is their second year doing that. And uh, the US, Australia, and New Zealand are, are I believe, in the top okay. 15 and have been for those two years. Uh, I think the number one both years in a row uh, was the Netherlands. Uh, and they look at three areas. So uh, legislation, governments, policy, um, consumer acceptance, awareness, hope I'm getting these right, uh, and, technolo and technology, uh, technological advancements. And so I think an area where the US could do better is we are, we are a, a patchwork of regulations right now. Every state is different. And if you imagine you're doing you know, a, a trip somewhere, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna hit a border. And so how do we harmonize legislation? So I would say uh, we're not the leader in that area. Uh, certainly in Silicon Valley, the Bay Area where I am, uh, we are a leader as far as new forms of, of transportation, autonomous, connected, electric, and shared. Uh, we probably could do some more work on infrastructure here. For Australia and New Zealand, you know, I would say that uh, you also are, you know, in my mind, quite known as innovation. So it's the innovation mindset, the innovation thinking. Um, less, I think, you know, you might have less. Uh, more willing to uh, rethink something uh, and look at innovation, innovative methods to start from scratch. Whereas I think, you know, in the U.S. you might have a, a tendency to be a little bit too U.S. centric or think about it from a lens of, well, we've never tried that before. And my experience with, you know, both the the Australians and the and the Kiwis is that there's a little bit more of a, you know, we can we can think about it from a brand new start. You know, kind of throw away the box and and start and think entirely outside of it. Yes, I think that um, Australia does have that opportunity around getting um, the laws right and we do have a, quite a advanced work in that area. And also I think, yes, your unconstrained thinking and thinking outside of the box is definitely what's required in this new transport paradigm. So um, I'm interested to know from your perspective what do you think of these technologies that we're working on globally would be first to market in a wide scale commercial offering? And maybe some thoughts about why you think that's the case. Mm. Uh, great question and I'm not gonna pick a winner. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of candidates out there uh, and they've already demonstrated some uh, focused applications. So 
One that comes to mind is Torque Robotics. They were actually uh, a finalist uh, in the DARPA challenges 10 years ago, and since then have had uh, a, a, a revenue generating business model. And so you'll find that companies such as Torque Robotics and others uh, have their components or full scale driving systems already in vehicles, in, um, in forklifts, in construction machinery, in entirely uh, mechanized and automated uh, manufacturing cities. So, you know, I think there's kind of winners in that way that are, so to speak, already under the hood, and we don't necessarily, uh, you know, think about them front and center. Uh, the other area I would personally keep an eye on is uh, unmanned uh, 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 air vehicles, so UAVs. These have also been around for some time, and so uh, when we think about how that might evolve uh, delivering uh, material or transporting people. It's a technology that already exists and uh, you know it's not on the street, so there's less road hazards. And so I would think that's an area to keep a close eye on. And finally, I'd also keep an eye on picking not just the technology, but the city, because it's so important for the city uh, environment, the city regulations, uh, the specific needs of that community to pair with the technology and also those specific city characteristics. So we'll find winners when the public and the private work together to solve uh, an immediate need. Uh, you know, this your question reminds me of, I visited about uh, eight years ago, uh, a town in Mexico called Guanajuato, and uh, it was an old silver mine, a silver mining town. And so they had tunnels all under their city and they used those tunnels for uh, traffic. And so the uh, city itself was beautiful. Every house looked, you know, freshly painted with a porch and there was cafes and outdoor seating areas and parks. And uh, so now visible congestion and uh, more of kind of a living green city. And so, you know, we can look to cities and what characteristics they have to help um, deploy and influence the type of technology that goes there. Thank you so much for that, Suna. It's been great having you here and really appreciate you sharing your insights and expertise. Um, how can um, people get in contact with you and AMG? Well, uh, they can email me directly with any questions or comments. I'd love to hear uh, about what folks are doing around the world in this field. So my email is suna at amobility.com. Uh, and they can also visit our website, amobility Dot com and we have uh, examples of some of the work that we do uh, and some of the exciting uh, technologies that we're working on as well. Thanks very much. So thank you very much for joining me uh, with this Advi Connect series with Suna Tomez from AMG. She's given you her contact details. If you want to find out more information about Advi Connect or Advi, please visit our website and I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.